losing the die roll is never great, especially when your hand's not very good either. So I don't think I can keep a one lander, especially without a scry. So we're going to mulligan. Um, this is not a one lander. It is not exactly powerful. One of the things I've noticed in my practice is that it normally draws pretty good hands, but this isn't one of them. I do think I'm going to keep it, though. I'd rather not go to five cards, since I can actually play the cards in my hand. And as far as this card goes, I'd prefer it be like a crane or something to help balance out the mulligan. Uh, but this is a good card, and Scrying is going to go and get Inventor's Fair, so I, th I think I'll go ahead and keep it. Might be wrong, though. Let's hope this doesn't turn around. Like, if this is an aggressive deck, a keep like that's not going to be good. A crane would be much better. A lot of people say Crane's the best card in the deck, and it probably is. I just think the secret best card in the deck is the Caravan, because it just kind of brings everything together. Like, you never actually find yourself cutting it. I don't want to spend the energy on this green here, but there's not really a whole lot more I'm going to be spending it on. It's a decent draw, fourth land. So, yep, got to make the green. I want to use my mana every turn. Going to get Inventor's Fair. one less Inventor's Fair I have to draw. And right now it's going to act as the first copy of Metalwork Colossus. Alright, we got a, looks like a slower opponent on these Abzan colors. Hopefully they don't go explosive on us with token shenanigans. It might just be a mid-range deck, which I believe is the best matchup. Because they're not pressuring us early and our end game is more powerful. The synergy is more powerful. Like, they've just been playing land go. We're going to win a land go battle. So I could play Sky Sovereign here. That's the most efficient use of the mana because I'm going to hit land drop number four. But another efficient use is Archive into Caravan number two. So it's debatable. Not like, Throwing Sky Sovereign into an empty board seems kind of unnecessary. So I, I can still advance a greater number of mana costs that way, so I'm going to do it. I mean, the jury is pretty much out on what we're playing, so it's no secret anymore. The argument for playing Sky Sovereign first is being able to attack with it sooner. Um, it's like the haste for your creatures. That's kind of how vehicles feel. But uh, I still have two caravans, so right now uh, it is at 7, 8, 9, 10. So Colossus is one mana. Our opponent has played zero non-land permanents. Okay, Spire of Insanity. So right now, I can get exactly one Colossus. So first thing I'm going to do is make sure it costs zero by playing this Pinhead Prism, and maybe we'll draw either into a second Colossus or the Ugin land. Or second Minter. That's kind of a second Colossus. So what I'm going to do is play this... I was thinking about Inventor's Fair at the end of the turn, untap, play Inventor's Fair, go get another Colossus. But I'd also like to play this Sky Sovereign. So, I, But I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with my previous idea. Yep, I like my previous plan better. Especially with them not playing anything, I don't need to run this Sky Sovereign out. The card, I mean, they can kill Colossus all day with removal, like murder and stuff. But the one card I really don't want to run into is Declaration in Stone. Okay, so they are playing this. I mean, are they just having a slow start? A bunch of lands? I'm not really sure what to think. Maybe, or maybe they're just mid-range and that's just a good, efficient card. 0-1 tokens are a little annoying, just being honest, for these 10 tens without Trample. Okay, activate. Alright, Pentad Prism. First we're going to start by playing Fair number 2. And we need to figure out how much mana I have available. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, I'll have exactly 4 mana left over if I play a Sky Sovereign, which isn't enough to activate the Fair because that's a tap. If I play Prism and I'm playing off the top of my deck, that would make playing the Inventor's Fair a little less good because that could have been a... Um, Sanctum of Ugin, which would have been a more efficient use of the mana. So I'm committed to this play, so I'm going to do it. I am still going to play the Pentad Prism, but I'm not going to play the Sky Sovereign. 
even though I could shoot down the uh, token. Now exposing both Colossus can be risky to the Declaration Stone, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because like like we're playing a huge ten ten deck, you got you got to go all in, right? Attack them for ten. At least the stone is a sorcery. They'll chump block. I, do I attack the Nissa? I don't know. Like they're just gonna make another chump blocker. So I think I I think I attack Nissa with at least one of them, right? They take five. They make another chump blocker. Maybe play two. I play Sky Sovereign. Yeah, so I'm going to attack with one to Nyssa. Yeah, I, I think that's the right play. I could just attack Nyssa out. He could easily have a removal spell. Yep, saves Nyssa, takes five. I get Declaration, Stone, and lose. No, I'm just kidding. Like, I mean, the Slumbering Falls can crew the vehicles, which is awesome. And I have a Sky Sovereign, so the backup plan is still a thing. Although, losing the Colossus is a very good way to lose the game as well. Alright, Oath of Nyssa cannot find Declaration in Stone. So, fingers crossed, the fact that they play that first. So, if my opponent plays Gideon... Soren, okay. Soren's actually pretty good. It's pretty good. Oh man, that's even better. Okay, so they had it. Um, they just, I guess, sandbagged it. Played the oath first just because. Maybe had a better use of their mana. Well, nothing that can be done there. Gonna play a fair game now. Don't really care too much about the shambling then. So now I think Sky Sovereign will go after Nyssa because we gotta play this more grindy game. We can't just kill him in one swing anymore. All right, let's get this Lumbering Falls out there. Play this here. Sky Sovereign, I'll do like that. I want to be able to crack one of these uh, clues. Clues are also a good way to recycle the Colossus if they're in your graveyard. Well, they had the they had the Declaration Stone, like this card that's not seen much play at all. And it's like only really good against this. No, that's not true. It's a good efficient removal, but all right. So if they plus Nissa, make another token, I can Crew Sky Sovereign attack the Nissa, or attack and kill the Nissa, and hope that they don't have a, a murder or something. Soren, that's a that's a card. Soren ha will have a little bit of trouble killing. A Colossus, though. So maybe there's a new plan where I just attack and kill Sorn altogether. So I don't think I can just let him have a Sorn, right? Like it's another card not seeing much play, but it's still fairly powerful. I, yeah, I think this is just like a junk mid-range good stuff deck. Well, didn't crack the clues. Want to see if I can find another Colossus first because I'm going to save him, but I probably need to find gas. So first step, I'm going to play this here. Uh, yeah, I'll take the blue mana. Play this worse Pentad Prism. Okay, okay, that's a th okay. Alright, so he's tapped out. If I find another Colossus, I can maybe kill both now. Well, okay, a Sky Sovereign attacks, shoots a token, attacks Soren. It's only six. I would need to find two more, so yeah. So I gotta figure out how I want to use my mana, because I can crew, I'll, or I can crew with the Lumbering Falls, but um, a Caravan's just gonna get chump blocked all day. So I think the plan is to try to find another Colossus. Yeah. Not a Colossus, but a good card nonetheless. Because I can just cycle these away later. Okay, well, hit a bunch of nothing. Not sure if I played a land yet. Didn't, because I was expecting to potentially draw a 
Sanctum. All right. So just gonna kill the Soren. Soren's a little too good. It's too much card advantage. Attack step. Attack Soren. Kill Soren. And hope they have nothing in their five card hand. Really, all I they, I just want them to have nothing to kill Colossus. Like they can have gas all day because I'm pretty sure my gas beats their gas. Is that a thing? Oh man, they have another one. They should have all the things. I just I I play the deck with main board deck declaration stone, but that that's okay because might as well try the worst matchup, see how the deck performs. All these little O ones blocking my ten tens. But they don't even need to block because they just like they just turn into stone, even though they're already made out of metal, I mean. Yeah. Okay. Can't crack this clue with my exactly one mana. So I can kill one of the planeswalkers. I'm gonna start by playing this hero prism pentad thing. No, that prophetic prism. It's not pentad prism. What am I? What am I saying? I'm just getting way too distracted. Drew the sanctum. Might as well play it. Try to find a thing. Don't want to spend too much mana because I probably need to make this falls a thing. All right, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I still have quite a bit of mana left. I want to just be careful how many hedron archives I tap because I'm probably gonna cycle one. That's pretty good. That's a uh, per per good. All right, let's see. So I could clean up the tokens, but then I probably don't have enough mana to make this lumbering falls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven mana. Obviously, don't have enough. So I could either play Chandra crew attack and kill the Gideon. This would probably down tick to try to kill the Chandra. Um, so I would send. A token at Nissa, they would block. Yeah, they would have to block to try to kill Nissa on the crackback or Chandra on the crackback. So I think playing Chandra is correct. I'm not sure if I can see any real value out of actually crewing the caravan. I'm not, I feel like it doesn't matter because no, they're going to just jump block anyway. Might as well pretend to represent something. All right, so I'm going to take I'm going to take Gideon out. Gideon's the most threatening. Or or yeah, I get I get my trigger. So yeah, I'm gonna attack Gideon and put Nissa to one. Then they can't crack back. And this will attack Nissa to to kill it dead. So this will help with what they have in play, not be able to kill Nissa on a swing back because they only have two power, or I guess they could have four. Yeah, still not enough though. All right, let's see if this is the right way to do it. This deck can be kind of cluttery and overwhelming. So, yep, all right. So they just need to not have another Gideon or another Nyssa or anything. I'm hoping all they have is to animate the shambling vent. Looks like they're in the tank. I like it. That means that it's not obvious what the play is. A spell? Nope. Okay, that's completely fine. I'll sacrifice all zero of my creatures. Man vehicles. Such an interesting card type. I guess it's a subtype, right? Yeah. Okay, so now they can kill Nyssa. Or, excuse me, Chandra through the Nyssa. So they send three, four, five, and one at me. Or they leave one back. They might just leave one back. Okay, that's cool. Like, 
top decking the other shaman would obviously be pretty awesome. I wonder if this Sky Sovereign is just going to ride me to victory. Alright, let's cycle. No. That is not what I wanted to do. That's a cool new little thing, though. That's, that has not always been there. Digging for some cards. Wow. Okay. So, I don't really want to get rid of the other one yet. So, just going to do some beats action first. Well, let's pay for that differently, because I want to use Prism. I don't have to pay a life. Gonna attack him. Got a race. Yeah, we wanna not let that get too much stuff because this has become a lot better. He's down to two cards though. Um, I think at this point, I'm just gonna try to draw cards. So make some energy. Leave up the mana to crack the archive. Because I, if I can find one more Chandra, I. They just clean up these tokens in, in this game. Not sure how good... I mean, there's only one Colossus left. So the Colossus game plan being like a bunch of 10-10s ten isn't really a thing anymore. These grinding games do make for a long video. Alright, no more Nissas or Gideons. We don't want these Anthems. Okay. That's like Gideon mana. Okay, that I don't mind. I might just ignore that, because I can't actually kill anything I have. It is card advantage, but I'll probably actually start shooting these tokens down. And I'm okay with them losing life. Uh, that's a lot of power. So Chandra now has to die to kill off the tokens. So I'd probably just kill all but the 4-4. Four four. 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Ooh, almost dead. I think I'm on Chandra or Bus, right? I can't actually... Kill. Oh, no, he attacks out like that. He's just dead. Oh, he, oh no, no, because I only have the one Lumbering Falls. All right, so I'm on Timely Top Decks here. Heh, Timely. Also, I, I need this to not be... Well, no, Fatal Push can't kill a Caravan without the Revolt... So, how many... I mean, I can only, I only have three life. Okay. Two cards incoming. I need, like, something to crew vehicle. Ugh, man. That is not... Ah! Got there. Okay. So now we just crew two vehicles and win the game. Do we have enough mana? Oh, wait. Wait a sec. So... Five. Yeah, yeah, we have enough mana. Cool. Yeah, we have plenty of mana because we have two caravans. Like, writing on the board, right? Okay. So do this, let's do this right. Filter for green. Not pay any life. Good habits. Oh, yeah, we had plenty of mana. That was the draw plan, at least that or Chandra. Chandra obviously would have won the game when he attacked out. So I just shoot the token and win the game, right? Am I missing anything? What is one black going to do? Like, if he had one black, one red, like, what would that do? I, I feel like the win is on the table. But... I feel like I'm going to miss something and lose. Attack. All at my opponent. Swing. Kill your token. Win the game? Come on, win the game. Yeah. Okay. Won that grindy game with I didn't attack with a single Colossus. So it's a it's a tokens deck, I, I guess. Like they splash black for the oath of Liliana, which does make tokens, I, I guess. Like So if it's tokens, I want these board wipes, right? Right? I don't know, but they're not they don't make a large amount of tokens at once. They kinda build it up and one for one you and the planeswalkers kind of get there so I want to be able to stop planeswalkers 
I don't really think I want negate though because that makes me defensive. Yeah, he's saying he kept a pretty land heavy hand having no plays early. So now, having the knowledge is good. So I don't want the second deep feeding its tokens, because just having a bunch of tokens doesn't really help. A trap seems decent against... Yeah, I think I like trap. It's pretty good against planeswalkers. So I just gotta decide if I want all these board wipes or not. I think the answer is probably yes. I think board wipes are gonna be better than inspectors and sylvan scrying. Being able to take out their tokens. Now, that leaves a I could either keep us in Spectre, that's kind of weird, but Negate could be pretty good against all these Planeswalkers. They didn't actually play a single creature spell. So just maybe one Negate, that off-ball, like, Negate and win the game. Sky Sovereign seems good. Chandra seems good. I do at least need the one Deep Fiend in here. Uh, they're not quite pressure, like, they're not that fast in early attacks to make the one life there matter. So what would neg Would I want a second Negate? Maybe I want... To, to do a better diversification of board wipes and counter spells, yeah. So let's do three board wipes, two counter spells. Let's see how that works. <laughs>